The Richmond Ballet is giving people a once in a lifetime opportunity to experience the Nutcracker from the comfort of their own home this holiday season. How are they going to do it? Well, we're going to find out and get all the details right now. Stoner Winslet, artistic director at the Richmond Ballet, and dancer Ari Nishihara is with us this morning, and we are so excited to have them on our show. And uh, Ari, by the way, is playing the Sugar Plum Fairy, if you can't tell by seeing her there on the screen. Welcome, ladies. Good to have you on Virginia this morning. Thanks for having us. Great to see you. All right, so I'm going to start with you because you've been doing this for quite some time. And I think the Sugar Plum has been uh, a, a tradition since the beginning of time. This time, it's, <laughs> it's going to be very different, isn't it? It surely is. Um, you're right, Bill. This is my 41st season directing the Richmond Ballet. I'm the longest tenured artistic director in the country because I started when I was two years old, you know. Exactly. But, um, we have done the Nutcracker live with the Richmond Symphony every single year. But because of COVID, we all just decided that for the audience's sake, as well as the dancers, the stage hands, the musicians, that being up close and personal with that many people was not going to be a good idea. And so yeah. we were lucky that we filmed last year's opening night. It was actually celebrating my 40th anniversary and the successful completion of our $10 million capital campaign. And we got a good film of the show and we're putting it together and we're offering it to people um, to enjoy from the comfort of their own homes. You know, when you say enjoy it from, uh, from home, here's the thing, and from a very selfish point of view, those of us out in the community, it ain't Christmas without the Nutcracker. I mean, it just wouldn't, I, it wouldn't work. I don't know how that would happen. So thankfully we have that. And then on top of that, you've got several add-ons on top of just seeing, being able to watch it at home, don't you? We do. We do. You can watch just the show. You can spend a little extra money um, and get bonus footage with dancers talking about backstage traditions. Or you can spend a little bit more money and get a Nutcracker souvenir box with crafts and decorate cookies. And then... You can get an experience with a real sugar plum fairy. Maybe Ari wants to tell you about some of those packages. I was going to say, there's a perfect lead in for Ari, who is absolutely stunning this morning, and uh, we want to have her on. So, Ari, being the sugar plum fairy is a big deal, isn't it? Yes. Um, I think sugar plum fairy is um, what is what brings the magic to Nutcracker, to Clara's dreams. And I think it's just such an honor to be able to just sprinkle all the fairy dust all over the city and the world and just share a little bit of um, the holiday spirit and the magic with everybody. All right, Ari, you're on camera there, but I want you to step back so people can see the whole photo, the, 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 the whole oh, shot the beautiful here. Cross. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. Gorgeous. All right. So, Ari, it, you know, I have been backstage and watched you guys and I've watched you guys rehearse before. And it is so impressive to, to the actual athletic ability that you have. And so uh, the Richmond Ballet is one of the few in the country that has continued to work. Tell us what it means to you to be able to keep doing your craft to be able to keep doing our craft um it means so many different things to us physically being able to dance in the studio and perform and keep up our technique um i think is vital to our art form and our um bodies but um spiritually emotionally just being able to do something we love and not stop um even in this very different time is really special. I think it just feeds my soul and being able to share our passion and our art form with um, everybody, I think is something we all need right now. And um, people are really lucky to be able to do that here at Richmond. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, I think I said at the beginning of the show here, at the beginning of the, this little interview that we're doing, is that uh, for us, it just wouldn't be Christmas without it. So, and, and I'm sure being a ballerina is not a job. 
It's a lifestyle. It's your passion. It's who you are. And we can't wait to see uh, how being able to maintain that skill level and keeping things really, really going. Uh, we can't wait to see it on screen. Uh, Stoner, this is uh, a work of, um, of your life. Obviously, you've been doing it for a long time. And we thank you so much for keeping the Richmond Ballet going during this difficult time. Uh, it, it, this is going to be another Nutcracker season, and we're looking forward to seizing. Thank you both, ladies, for doing all you do. Oh, thank you for having us. And, you know, we're performing one more week here live in the studio theater. And then once we hit Nutcracker time, um, it is possible to get a Sugar Plum Fairy to come right to your house and visit wow. you or Snow Queen or the Dancing Bear. There are ways to see um, live characters as you enjoy the film. So look, richfromballet.com, it will tell you everything. All right. Thank you both, ladies. Now get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> the pre-recorded performances release on December the 11th. For more information, visit them online at richmondballet.com slash nutcracker. You can give them a call at 804-344-0906, extension 161. Folks, it's going to be good. <laughs> I was dancing. I was so inspired. You were dancing. You were dancing. We caught you. All right. You know what, Jess? The Nutcracker is such a timeless classic that, uh, of course, it's a tradition for a lot of families to take little girls and maybe even little boys to see this show every year. Um, a little fun factoid for you, and maybe you did this too. I was in the Nutcracker one year. Did you know what? that? They in have what role? Um, well, they have at the very opening of the show, when the when the whole cast is out on the stage, there's a couple that walks across the stage with a baby stroller. And yes. Shelly Perkins and I from the radio station got to be that couple with the outfits and the whole thing. And so our instructions were to walk across, stop midway, look back at the cast, and then walk on off. Oh, and, yes. and so we did it and I, I did it and I didn't trip and um, I didn't stand on my tiptoes, but I was in the Nutcracker. So can that's you imagine resume. what a really <laughs> cool experience? But can you imagine if you got out there and you're like, OK, I can walk a stroller across a flat surface. But yeah. what happens if you trip and <laughs> the thing shot out? I mean, <laughs> That's all of that goes of through your head when you're standing backstage. Yeah. It's like you got all of these people, these professional folks who have worked for months and months and months to get this right. All you have to do is walk. Don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess it up. You know, it's funny. I have a memory with talking uh, with the Richmond Ballet last year for a head of Nutcracker. We got to go into the costume closet. Well, costume oh, room, that. really. Yeah. And talk with the team. I had the chance to wear Mouse King's ensemble and, right. you know, like swirl Mouse King's tail. That thing is so heavy. I don't understand how they stand in it, let alone dance in it. I remember seeing that. That was a that was a very special event. And uh, I don't know. I think you know. You know how they say in the movies whenever they're promoting movie, movie so and so was made. Jessica was made to play the Mouse King, the part she was <laughs> born to do. <laughs> At least for that day I was. <laughs> All right, Nutcracker and more information available on our website, wtbr.com slash VTM. Stay right with us. Virginia This Morning returns after this break. <laughs>